long has that been there? Uh, that's better. Focus. Five hours to stack that. <laughs> Not doing it again. Guess we're doing this first person. I've been up too long. Hi right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So today I have some bottles of carbonated water. This happens to be seltzer, but other formulations can work. Sugar and food coloring doesn't really change things all that much. All I've done to these bottles is remove the labels so you can see the liquids more easily and stick them into a slush filled bucket for a few hours so they can be equally frosty. So they're at the same temperature. Now what I'm going to do here is we're going to open them up and add these pressure gauges so we can see what's going on. So this one I'll just Wait, let's uh, put that there so you can actually see the gauge. Now this one I'm just going to open up like so. Install the gauge, and that's it. Okay, this one you do something very similar, except. I'm going to pour it out. There we go. I've poured myself a glass. Let's install the gauge. Okay. There we are. Now you can see the pressure gauge over here is already beginning to show a value. This is upside down. Sorry about that. What's going on is the equilibrium is being reestablished. There's a reaction between the carbon dioxide and the water, forming carbonic acid. This reaction is reversible, and how far it goes either way depends on the pressure and temperature. Temperature is the same, pressure was reduced, and so now the gas is coming out of solution and filling the void. Eventually, an equilibrium will be reestablished. I can speed things along by giving it a shake. So you can see the pressure increased suddenly there. So I'm going to give both of them a good shaking until equilibrium is established. I'll shake them more than I need to just to prove that I did it properly. But if you don't believe me, feel free to do these experiments on your own. Okay. Give them a good shaking. Now, have a look at those gauges. Look at that. The value is not much different, but there's definitely a difference. And that is significant enough that that's not gauge error. The pressure in this bottle is actually higher, even though it contains less carbon dioxide. I just I poured out a whole bunch of it there. Pressure should be lower, right? <laughs> but it's not. Isn't that wild? So what's the difference between these two bottles? Well, there's the amount of water that's different. The amount of carbon dioxide is different. But both of those factors would make me think that the pressure should be lower over here. But there's one more difference. If you'll recall, while I was pouring out the liquid, this one pulled air back into itself. So this had air in it along with the carbon dioxide. So let's do this experiment again, but this time when I pour it out, let's replace the carbon dioxide so that there's no air in the system. Grab another bottle here. Let's open it up. Pour it off. 
Okay, same amount of liquid is poured off. The maple seed, or box elder seed. It's from the snow. Okay. Let's get the carbon dioxide going. Oh, we're going to need that gauge. I only have two. Okay, put that in there. Okay. That should have gotten rid of most, if not all, of the air. Ow. Let's shake this one up. Okay. Oh, look at that. Pressure is substantially lower. What is that? 15 pressure units? This one is like 23. So clearly, the air does have an effect to increase the pressure. The difference here is 8 pressure units. And if I were to tell you that the atmospheric pressure that I have around me is 12 pressure units, well, that doesn't really help, but doing this experiment at sea level or in a higher atmospheric pressure will result in a greater pressure differential here. Because what I have is the pressure from the air is being added to the pressure of the carbon dioxide. It's not perfect because there was still some carbon dioxide which displaced some of the air. Also, since I added carbon dioxide to this chamber, Less had to come from the water in order to re-establish equilibrium, so equilibrium happened at a little bit higher pressure than it would have. You see, the equilibrium between the water and the carbon dioxide depends only on the carbon dioxide. The oxygen and nitrogen, they don't react with anything. They're just spectators. They're just there for the ride, being jostled around. And there's plenty of space between them for the carbon dioxide molecules to fit. Plenty of room. As far as the water carbon dioxide equilibrium is concerned, the chamber full of air may as well be a vacuum. The bottle itself and the gauge, though, are being impacted by more gas molecules, and that generates a higher pressure. This one is under less pressure because there's less gas molecules. In fact, this is a very simple demonstration of Dalton's law, that the total pressure of a system is equal to the partial pressure, or the pressure, of each gas that is in the system. And this bottle over here, which has been bubbling away as I've been talking, the carbon dioxide water equilibrium is not establishing to atmospheric pressure. It's establishing to the pressure of the carbon dioxide which is in the room, which is probably around a thousand parts per million, or 0.1% of the atmosphere. So eventually, this will go completely flat. There will be so little carbon dioxide, you won't even be able to tell it's there. But simply putting something over the cap so that it reduces the amount of diffusion so there's still carbon dioxide here will keep the beverage from going flat as quickly. It, it might stop bubbling because there won't be enough pressure of the equilibrium to generate bubbles but it will still be acidic and tangy, even though there's no pressure differential. <laughs> but of course, if you want to keep your soda or whatever bubbly for the longest amount of time possible, you should increase the pressure of the carbon dioxide as much as possible. If you're interested in this topic, I have made another video, description down in the link, in which I use an apparatus which is a little bit more similar to what Dalton would have actually used. I go into more detail on vapor pressures and stuff. So, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.